All right, in this lesson's video, we're gonna be talking all about what are called similar polygons and scale factors. Um, we're gonna start by talking mostly about similar polygons. We'll finish by talking about scale factors. And then I'm gonna go ahead and make kind of a separate video taking us through um, the second half of the notes, which is where we'll talk about ratios of perimeters and kind of all of that kind of stuff. So we're gonna kind of break this section of notes up into a couple of videos um, just to make them a little bit more manageable. So with similarity statements is where we're going to start. A valid similarity statement must match corresponding angles and sides. So that's kind of what we're looking to do is we're looking to match two different figures up to each other. Now the symbol for similar is the tilde. So it's the kind of curved line. If you're looking for it on your keyboard, it's right above the tab key on the left side of your keyboard to kind of see what that looks like. That's also the sign that we use for similarity. So if we're gonna match these triangles up, notice that angle A matches with D, B matches with E, and C matches with F. So when we name our first triangle, triangle ABC, we have to name our second triangle so that the angles match up. So A matched with D, so it will start with D. B matched with E, so that would be the next letter. And C matched with F, so that would be the last letter. Now in this case, those ended up being in alphabetical order. That's not always going to necessarily be the case. You have to be careful with kind of how that works. All right. Let's take a look at some more examples of this. In fact, let's kind of see some different ways that we can write similarity statements. Um, for example, on our next kind of set of polygons, we would have that K matches with P, L matches with Q, N matches with S, and M matches with R. So when we name these, and when we name a polygon, we don't put a symbol, we just name it um, by its vertices, by its corners. And so let's just go ahead and name the first one, um, starting with K and then kind of going clockwise from there. So that would be the K, L, M, N is similar to, and then we'll do the same thing with our next polygon, starting at P and just kind of going clockwise from there, would be P, Q, R, and then S. Now, an easy way to name some other figures that are similar would be to just pick a different starting point, but then go in the same order. For example, if on the first one we started at L, we could say that L, M, N, back to K is similar to, just make sure you start on the other polygon at the same kind of corresponding angle. So starting at Q, and then you can go around Q, R, S, P. Now, you don't have to go clockwise. You could always go counterclockwise or whichever order you wanted to, um, as long as you went either clockwise or counterclockwise. Um, for example, if we wanted to go counterclockwise, meaning going to the left around our polygon, maybe starting at K, you could name it K, N, M, L is similar to. Starting at P, then you would go to S, then R, then Q. So as long as the angles always match up with their congruent angles on the other polygon, you're always gonna be kind of okay for similarity. Now, with similar polygons, some kind of facts to know about those. Um, polygons that are similar are going to have the same shape, but are gonna have different size. Polygons then are similar if the following two statements are true. That all the pairs of the angles are congruent. So all the corresponding pairs of angles are congruent, and the symbol for congruence is the equal sign with the tilde on top. In addition, all pairs of corresponding sides must be proportional. And so that was why we had worked on that with scale factors and especially with dilations um, to kind of understand how that's going to work for um, similar polygons right now. So to give you an example of this, if you look first at our angles, we basically have four different angles and they match up with each other. In fact, these are the same figures as above. We've already kind of gone over the angles that are congruent to each other. Um, we said that K matched with P, so we could say that K is congruent to P. We said that L matched with Q, so we could write that L is congruent to Q. We said that N matched with S, so we could say that N is congruent to S. And that M matched with R, so we could say that M is congruent to R. 
In addition, we can say that the sides are proportional. So let me get rid of some of that. Let's now talk about the sides. So when we match up sides, we could say that n to k is proportional to s to p. But then you have to be careful with your ratios. You have to make sure you continue in the same direction. So how I'm starting with my figure on the left, I need to continue with that. So saying that k to l is going to be proportional to p to q, which is going to be equal to the proportion of l to m over q to r is equal to the proportion from m to n over r to s. And one way to check yourself is to make sure that in the kind of numerator or the top of all of those ratios, that they all come from the same figure. So they're all the n's, k's, l's, and m's. In other words, we don't see pqrs in our numerator. But in our denominator, we should have only pqrs and no l, m, and k. Okay, let's do a, a couple more examples, and then we will kind of save the rest for the next video. So, in our next example, we're going to list all of the congruent angles and write a proportion that relates the corresponding sides. And so, we really can't tell just by looking at the figure. We're actually going to have to, to use the notation to be able to figure this out. And so, each pair of angles is going to match like so. J is going to match with Q. So, we can say that angle J is congruent to angle Q. Next we would have that K matches up with R. So we would say that angle K is congruent to angle R. Next we have L. So we would say that angle L matches up with angle S. And finally we have that M matches up with P. So we would say that angle M is congruent to angle P. As for the sides, we then need to be just a little bit careful. Um, let's start by talking about K to L. So that would be kind of this side right here. I'm going to call that just number one. What we then have to look at is, well, K to L is the same as going from R to S. So that would match up right here. Let's take a look for a couple more. Well, let's go ahead and write those down first. So we can say that K to L is the same as R to S. Next, let's maybe do L to M. So if we go from L to M, that would be the same as going from S to P. So LM should be proportionate to SP. Okay. Maybe next let's go M to J. So from M to J, that would be the same as going from P to Q. So MJ is proportional to PQ. So that would be right here. And finally, we can look at that last side. So looking at that, we would have that J to K is the same as going from Q to R. So that would be the fourth one and the last one that we need to write our statements. All right, let's do one more of those and then we will save kind of the rest for the next day or for the next video, I should say. So now we're looking at two different triangles. We're told that triangle XYZ is similar to triangle RYS. So in a similar way, let's go through and do the angles first. So angle X matches with R. So angle X is congruent to angle R. Next we'll do Y. So Y matches up with itself, which doesn't kind of mean much. It doesn't really hold much, but yeah, I guess angle Y would be congruent to itself. And then lastly, we'll look at that next one. So Z matches with S. So we would say angle Z is congruent to angle S. All right, now let's talk about the sides of our triangles. I want to start by looking at this first side, which is from R to Y. So I'm just looking at from this point right here at R to Y. So from R to Y, that should be proportionate to x to y. So we'll say r over y is proportionate to x over y. 
Next, let's maybe look at from S to Y. So looking from here to Y. And so to get from S to Y, we take from Z to Y. So again, S to Y proportionate to ZY. And then the only other side that we really have to worry about is that last side, which again, sticking on triangle RYS would be R to S. So that's our last side that we need to talk about. So to get from R to S, that would be the same as going from X to Z. So those two would be proportional. All right, that's all I want to do in this first part of this video. In the next part, we will talk about what's called scale factor, as well as the ratio of perimeter. Um, so we'll save that for the second part of this section of notes. I think that's a good kind of stopping point for the first video, and then we'll resume in the second.